everyone, this is Ayushi Gupta. Welcome to the 44th episode of Microsoft Hour of Code brought to you by Million Lights. Million Lights is a TV channel dedicated to improving the skills of people and their employability. Now let me tell you a little more about the Microsoft Hour of Code. Microsoft Hour of Code is a series of lectures, courses and talks by experts who are going to be discussing the latest Microsoft technology topics related to programming and industry forecasts that are all focused on employability. These courses are basically for people pursuing computer science. This content has been created by our partner Microsoft and today we have Christopher and John with us to help you building responsive UI with Bootstrap. Bootstrap is the most popular HTML, CSS, JavaScript framework for developing responsive UIs. This course will help you to develop good skills to create rich UIs for users and tips on building great looking applications. Let's move towards the course. In the previous episode, we covered introduction to Bootstrap, in which we got to know Bootstrap, theme support and responsive layout. In this episode, we will learn grid system components and Visual Studio support. And later on, we will move towards another topic, which is bootstrap components. So let's begin. Okay, now let's um, bring it on back and let's start talking a little bit about how we're gonna start to lay everything out. That as we talked about before, we want tables, mm -hmm. but not tables. And that's what the grid system is all about, is it gives us that ability to determine where we want to place everything in, in, in a logical table, but not an actual table. Mm -hmm. Now, we saw the fact that it already shrunk everything down automatically for us and start to kind of wonder, well, exactly how are we determining what's going to get laid out where and so forth. Well, all of this is based on the grid system. Now. I want to highlight a couple of quick things about the grid system. First of all, is you're going to notice that there are four different device sizes that are there out of the box. Now, in theory, could you go in and start to add more in? You could, you could add in more media selectors and so forth. Mm -hmm. But, and I'm going to get into this when we get into the last module. Before you go off and do that, ask yourself why? Ask yourself, do you really need this? That chances are those four general device sizes, less than 78 or 768 pixels, greater than equal to 768, up to and including 991, and then 90, uh, 992 up to just shy of 12,000, and then 12,000 and beyond. So this is going to be your uh, extra small, small, medium, and large, respectively. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple on yourself. Like I said before, typically those four sizes will actually do just fine for you. So there's going to be very little need to go off and start trying to tweak everything and, and make it even more so. And quite frankly, you're probably just going to be generating a lot of additional work with very little payoff in the long run. So stick yeah. with that. And you know, these aren't random numbers. These no. are based on exactly. sizes of popular devices. Exactly. It wasn't like somebody just woke up one morning and said, ah, 768. Right. You know, they actually did put a little bit of thought into it. Now, the next big thing that I want you to notice is the number of columns. The number of columns is always going to be 12. So in that little grid that you're going to get, you always have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, my little fo fo uh, fence post issue. Um, so there is our little 11 columns. And so I can go in and target how big I want something to be. So if I wanted to take up four columns, if I wanted to take up three columns, if I wanted to take up two columns, I can go in and identify how many columns wide I want something to be. And again, it's always going to be 12 columns. Could you go in and change that? Again, yeah, in theory, I, I, I suppose you could. But again, don't. Mm -hmm. Just leave it the way that it is. Now, one of the other things that you may have noticed is the fact that when I shrunk my window down, that I didn't get very small 
until all of a sudden it became single column. So you might be looking at this and you might be going, well, wait a minute, you had 12 columns, you had all that data spread across that one row, you shrunk it down and now all of a sudden it became vertical, what gives? Well, the reason that it did that is because as you shrunk down in size, what's gonna happen is Bootstrap is gonna realize, well, wait a minute, I don't have a whole lot of horizontal space to work with here. So it's gonna go, well, maybe we should just put it all into one column, so that way, instead of having to scroll left to right, which, by the way, I can't stand doing, <laughs> rather than having to scroll left to right, all that you have to do is scroll up and down to be able to see the data. And it might not be necessarily the best way to present that data, but it's going to be at least an easy way to consume that data. So it's a good starting point. One of the demos that we'll get into a little bit later in uh, module three is how I can start to target those particular uh, screen sizes. How I could go in and say on a small or on an extra small screen that I want to go in and make that um, take up two columns or five columns so that way you get away from that single vertical column that you get on the smaller screen sizes. Now that sort of begs the question, well then how do you go in and identify how wide you want something to be? John talked about this Real briefly earlier, the way that all of this happens is by classes. That essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna identify the particular item that you want and just simply identify how many classes or how many columns you want it to take up. So COL, short for, wait for it, column. column. MD for medium size screen. And again, we'll get more into targeting different size screens later on. And then finally, the number at the end, which is gonna identify how many columns I want that to take up. Now, you're gonna notice here, and this is just uh, grabbed from um, uh, getbootstrap.com, is that again, we always have 12 columns. One of the biggest uh, rookie mistakes that I see made with Bootstrap is people will go in, they'll kind of see all of that, and they'll just start playing around and just start, you know, changing the number of columns that they start to see, well, if I, you know, make the number bigger, it gets wider. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, what they're looking for is maybe something to be laid out like that, kind of in, in three sections. But when it renders, they notice that they wind up getting it kind of looking like that that they wind up getting some of their data here, they get some of their data here, they get some of their data here, and they start to wonder, well, what happened there? Right. What happened is you went beyond 12. That when you go beyond that 12 columns, Bootstrap still wants to display the data. It doesn't want to give you like an error message or anything. So what it's gonna do is when you go past 12, it's just automatically gonna move that onto the next row. So that's what wound up happening is when you went in, you did your math, you hit 13 or 14 or 15 on a particular row. So let's actually bring this back. I'm gonna do a, a demo here. Let me get out of my, uh, my slide, discard my ink, bring that back into here. Okay, cool. So I'm now back to the project that I created earlier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this collapse feature in Visual Studio, I really dig that. And I wanna highlight a couple of real quick things. You're gonna notice, first of all, that I've got a row. That again, not tables, but tables. Mm -hmm. So we do have rows just like we would on a table, but, but it's not actually a table. It allows us to think in those terms, but it's not actually using it. And then you're gonna notice here, there are my columns. And you'll notice col md four, four, and four. Mm -hmm. So if I go in and I tweak that, and let's say, just expand those back out, there we go. Let's say that I want the first one to be a little bit wider, let's make it six. Maybe I want the second one to be a little bit more narrow, let's make that uh, three. And then we'll leave the uh, last one as a bit narrow as well. We'll go ahead and say three. Six plus three plus three is 12. That's really the key to Bootstrap, I think, is being able to add to 12. <laughs> That's really the key. You may need a calculator <laughs> on your desk. <laughs> or open toed shoes. Right. <laughs> um, so, but, uh, but anyway, uh, let me go ahead, control F5, and now you're gonna notice that sure enough, my getting started is going to be wider, my get more libraries, and my web hosting are going to be a bit more narrow. Now, if I wanna go in and replicate this, 
then all that I would have to do is say div class equals row. And then I'll just go in and say div class equals call uh, md and let's say two. And then let's just put a header inside of there, h2, um, two columns. And then let's just go in and say div and class equals call md and let's say 10. I'll just kind of make it real quick and easy here. And I'll say h2 and this will be 10 columns. There we go. Look at all of that white space. All right. So now let's go ahead and fire that back up. There's going to be a lot of white space. And sure enough, what you're going to notice is that was only two columns to there. And then this was our full 10 columns of all of the remaining space. Yep. So there's our grid system in a nutshell. And I've seen a couple of comments about this already, about you know kind of where, to, where we are, where we're going. And I just want to highlight one more time here that this is our intro module, yeah. that we're just trying to set a little bit of the stage here. Trust me, we're going to talk a lot more about grids. You're going to be almost sick and tired of listening <laughs> to me talk about grids later, a little later on today. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, Barry already is. So uh, with that, uh, I want to kick it over to John here, yep. if you have your slides. I do. OK, so I'm going to be showing components. Yep. Uh, I do want to respond to re one really great question. And, and thank you, everybody, for all the great questions coming in. Yes. One person asked, what browsers does this work on? So if I go to the website. All the browsers. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, official support back to IE8. Um, and to do that, you need to use Respond.js. So mm -hmm. there's all this information here. So the, the site, if we haven't said it enough, is getbootstrap.com, right? So getbootstrap.com. Here I'm clicking on the Get Started link, and then I'm clicking on Browser and Device Support. And so, so this shows, here's what works. Officially support IE8 through 11, latest browsers, pretty much everything else. And then it goes through and explains stuff for IE8 that you should know about. And then one other thing is it says, uh, there's a key, another key thing in here to know, and that is, oh dear, I can't quite fit it in and draw. But it says it's not officially supported on 7, but it should generally work there. So that's, that's kind of the overview of the browsers there. Um, OK, so components. So we have a whole session on this later. We're running out of time here. So I just want to show, here's an example slide that has some screenshots. The whole goal, the, the whole idea is that you can just grab HTML, throw it in. So if, mm -hmm. I, go, if I go onto the, uh, the site here and I click on, here is a component. Let's just pick one that looks fun. So I'm going to grab a um, pagination. Or actually, I kind of like the progress bar. Right, so I'm gonna. I want a progress bar like that, right? So Where it will go all the way out to 99% and then sit yep. there for three hours. Exactly. <laughs> I would like one actually here that has with a label, right? So I'm just copying that. This is just HTML. Just copy paste. That's all that yep. you did there. Right. Copy just, paste. Just HTML. Right? No it. JavaScript. Nothing, nothing. Nothing funny up your sleeves. Okay. So I'm gonna throw this right below this jumbotron, which is kind of a, a fun name. So I save that in. I've made no other changes to the project, right? And I go in here and refresh it. There it is. So there's my progress bar, right? And so if I say I would like something different than 60%, so let's say I would like, you know, 80%, and let's see if there's anything else in here I need there, and we'll make this label say 80%, right? Refresh. Okay, so the point is, I've done, you know, there's, there's nothing else kind of required in order to do this. So it it's, goes back to the kind of it just works sort of stuff, right? So that's really all I want to show with components. We've got a whole session on it later today, including the exciting glyph icons, which make it easier to add Yay, stuff. Yay, glyph icons! You know, there, there was a time where just finding a good shopping cart 
icon for your site. That was a full <laughs> day's work. You can, what did you do today? I found a shopping cart icon. Good job, good job, John. Take the rest of the day off, right? And now this is just, you go on here and just throw this class in. Excellent. By the way, I want to answer a real quick question that, uh, that came up that I thought was very interesting about if there are any um, um, good themes for, um, and uh, they happen to mention um, uh, WordPress. Um, one of the great things about Bootstrap is that really at the end of it all, it's just Bootstrap. And I, there's a friend of mine that likes to say, uh, we're not launching rockets here. And the point that he's making when he says that is whatever it is that we're trying to do, it's already been done. At the end of the day, typically if you're doing, you know, WordPress or, or, or Blogspot or, you know, any of the others, you're just writing a blog. Yeah. And there's been a lot of people that have written blogs. Mm -hmm. And as a result, there's a lot of different themes that are available for bootstrap and blogging. So if, yeah. again, you know, head on over to Bing, you'll be able to find all sorts of pre-baked themes all set and ready to, uh, to go for you. Yep. Cool. Uh, well, uh, let me see. We are just about wrapping up. We have yep. Visual Studio support. So do you want to run with that? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay so Visual Studio support, uh, I'll be showing this later. You know, one of the, one of the um, good and bad things, there's tons of classes that you can just drop into your, your HTML and it just works, but you need to know those classes. And yes. you saw me go in and copy and paste. <laughs> well, that works for copy and pasting, but then if I want to go in and edit things, I need to know all the stuff. Um, you know, columns is just one thing. There's a ton of different classes. So it's nice that Visual Studio has that support built right in. Um, yep. And also with, um, with Web Essentials, they've got support in there for missing class detection. So this is something where there are some classes that need to be used in combination. If you just use one, it's not, it's, it's not gonna work, and you don't know why. Because it's CSS, there's no error message, it just doesn't do the right thing. Exactly, right? And, yes. <laughs> and so, th so this is a really nice thing. We're also gonna be showing later, um, I'll be showing some cool Visual Studio extensions. Um, but so if I go in here and I say, you know, div class equals, right, so there's progress bar, ooh, progress bar, danger. Danger. Right, so there that is. And you know, it makes it that simple just to kind of add that in. Yep. Um, and one other question, actually, while we're talking about about Visual Studio, is mm -hmm. uh, that that Bootstrap is pulled in via NuGet. Right. And NuGet is a package management system in Visual Studio, and so I can just right click in here and I can say Manage NuGet Packages, and if we look at installed packages, Bootstrap is one of them on the list. So, and, and this is a, an open source project. A lot mm -hmm. of the things you'll see on NuGet are open source, jQuery, a lot of other things on there. Yep. But this is an officially maintained NuGet package. So the Microsoft Outer Curve Foundation maintains that package. Yeah. So um, I want to close this off um, by answering um, a couple of questions that came up in the chat window, um, in particular around uh, jQuery. And I want to mention something right up front about jQuery when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to Bootstrap. And that is, first of all, that jQuery is required for Bootstrap, that one of the things that we'll be getting into later today is a lot of different components like modal dialogues, accordions, et cetera, that all of that is going to uh, be done behind the scenes with JavaScript, and Bootstrap is gonna use jQuery to, uh, to make some of that happen. Mm -hmm. Which leads me into the first big question that, uh, that I saw come flying through, which was, well, what about jQuery UI? Well, Here's one of the very nice things about Bootstrap, is that Bootstrap comes out of the box with a lot of the different things that jQuery UI already does. So if you're looking for an alert, you've already got that with Bootstrap. If you're looking for accordion, you've already got that with, uh, with Bootstrap. Now, one advantage, and we'll talk more about this a bit later, with using jQuery UI, is that jQuery UI does give you the ability to do things a little bit uh, more dynamically, or at least makes it easier to do things a bit more dynamic um, than I find sometimes with, uh, with Bootstrap. But I really just kind of like to stick with, uh, with Bootstrap if, I'm, if that's what I'm going to be using. But you can still use jQuery UI to help supplement things. The next big question that I saw was, well, how about being able to tweak these things dynamically with jQuery? One of the big points that we've been making as we've gone through all of this is the fact that a lot of what makes the magic happen with Bootstrap 
is simply adding on either classes or attributes. And managing classes and managing attributes with jQuery is probably one of the simplest things to do, that you just simply go find the item and then just simply say add class or remove class. So if you wanted to change a button from say green to red, then all that you would have to do is remove the BTN success class, which is what's gonna make it green, and then add on the BTN danger class, which is what's gonna make it red. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to go in and tweak that by using jQuery because typically, not always, but typically all that it's going to require is swapping out a, uh, a class or just simply adding on or removing an attribute. Yep. Cool. So with that, I think that pretty well does that. So uh, what do you say we, uh, we take a break? Yep. I could use a break. I could use a break. I'm yep. out of coffee. <laughs> we can't have that happening. It's good. Uh, but what we talked about there was really the, the basics of Bootstrap, uh, how to obtain it, uh, a little bit of the, uh, the Visual Studio integration. And uh, in the next module, we're going to go in and talk about components and all of those little cool green, red buttons, all those little glyph icons, and all those little things that, um, that Bootstrap is going gonna, is gonna to do to help make your life easier. So we're going to take 10, and we'll, uh, we'll come on back. Yep. And we're back. Hey, welcome back. Uh, that's John Galloway. I am. Um, Christopher Harrison. Yes. Yes, I read it off the slide. I, oh, that's, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's okay. I'm, <laughs> yeah, forgettable. Um, in any event. <laughs> I hope you had a good break. I sure yeah, did. Yeah, I sure did. Coffee. Yep. Um, so we are, we just finished our introduction to Bootstrap. Yep. And don't worry if, you, if it didn't all make sense. It was very fast. It was kind of a, it was the quick, quick infomercial version. Exactly, right? yeah. Um, so we showed... Now we're going to give the full infomercial version. Exactly. <laughs> so, and really out of that first session, hopefully people saw, you know, it's built into ASP.NET, uh, the latest ASP.NET templates, works mm -hmm. great with Visual Studio. Uh, we showed you some of the reasons why you should care about Bootstrap. Yep. Great for uh, responsive design, uh, nice themable, uh, you know, design, nice separation of your, your uh, CSS, so all your kind of design stuff is in your CSS. And one of the things we showed off there was components. So right. the idea of components as all those little widgets that you need to build into your site. And, uh, you know, so th things like, uh, it says here over a dozen, I think it's a lot more than that actually, but mm -hmm. um, reusable components. So iconography, drop downs, input groups, navigation alerts, blah, 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 quite a bit more. Yep. Um, so why would you use these? Well, number one is they generally look good. And if you just use the HTML primitives, uh, number one, they don't have things like <laughs> split drop-down buttons or, you know, kind of fancy navigation nav bars or things like that. And number two, they don't look good. <laughs> <laughs> they look really bad. They also look different on different browsers, right? So it kind of might look good on your browser and then someone's like, what just threw up on my browser? You yep. know, and it's, well, it's because of that. Number two, like I said, is themable. So you noticed as I was running before, uh, when I went through and, you know, I kind of flipped through my, um, you know, I, I run my app and then I, I change my theme, mm -hmm. everything changes, including, you know, things like the buttons. So when I, when I had that kind of one that had square things, all the buttons immediately got, yep. you know, got square. By uh, the way, just yeah. to highlight real quickly on that uh, on that themable, uh, yeah. one of the questions that came through on the um, uh, on the chat window was, well, I downloaded and updated the min CSS file and my theme was updated. Why didn't I have to update the bootstrap CSS? Yeah. The reason is, um, and this is the, the naming convention between um, Bootstrap CSS and Bootstrap Min CSS, and you see this pretty much everywhere, is that the Min version is the minified version. And in fact, here, let's um, uh, just sort of do it real quick here. Um, that if I go into Bootstrap CSS and I open that up, what you're going to notice is that that's nice and readable that I can actually scroll through, I can see what's going on, I've got line breaks, I've got tabbing, away you go. If I open up the min version, however, 
you're going to notice if I scroll on past the, uh, the, the comments there, that um, there it all is in one line. See, that's it. No Bootstrap, comments, it's just no, no. one line of CSS. That's, yeah. that's, 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 that's <laughs> all that you need. Yeah, exactly. So if you're looking to go in and start modifying or tweaking things on your own, you're going to want the full-blown Bootstrap CSS. Uh, but what you include inside of your pages is that minified version. Yeah. Because the minified version isn't easy for us as humans to read, but browsers have no problem whatsoever with it. That's why if you just update the min, it will automatically update your theme because that's what is being referenced. Right. And and just to pull a little bit more into that or dig deeper into that, is the reason that that's being referenced is if here I go into bundling, this is my bundle config, mm -hmm. and if I look at this and I scroll down and look for bootstrap, uh, you'll see here, let me see, where is bootstrap? I think it's just pulling in the CSS. And the reason that, that it pulls in the min one is actually the way that, uh, that uh, so here it would normally just pull in bootstrap CSS, but because of optimization, it's going to look for a .min.css first. So if that exists, it's going to pull that one in. So this, if I had switched this enable optimizations to false, then it would have gotten bootstrap.css. Yep. So that's kind of way deeper than you need to know about, but that's where the magic is happening. Okay, uh, so we talked about they look good, they're themable. Here's an important thing is it's a replacement for HTML server controls. So if you are, if you have been doing web forms development for a long time and you're saying, you know, where is my progress bar control or where is my, you know, or yeah. where's my label control, right. that kind of thing. Uh, these are, are really kind of great HTML, modern web-focused version of that. So w instead of generating HTML on the server that's going to you know, show a progress bar or something, instead we are just using you know, modern standard HTML and we're inserting values into that from the server, but all that markup is on the client. So this is a great, you know, if, if you're using a lot of uh, server controls, I recommend looking into kind of moving those towards towards Bootstrap instead. And it, it, one good reason for that is because it's really great for AJAX and single page applications. So, you know, once you've got these uh, HTML based controls, you're not tied to doing everything on the server. Instead, you are able to push content across using uh, an API and, mm -hmm. and displaying that using AJAX and single page applications. All right, so here's the slide that I showed from the, uh, the first session. You know, here's kind of a just grab bag of components. Now, I'll show you where I got that. And again, we're just going to continue to point you to the Bootstrap site. So if I go to getbootstrap.com, and then I click on this components uh, tab here. So this is kind of a, you know, here's the shopping cart. This is everything you get, right? So um, we've got things like glyph icons. Uh, these glyph icons are these, you know, icons. These are available as part of this, uh, this glyph icons uh, site. So you can go to glyphicons.com. Mm -hmm. And these are actually, these are licensed Creative Commons by attribution. So you really should put a link in the footer saying using glyph icon, or, you know, using uh, glyph icons and linking to it. If you want more additional, if you like these icons and you want more, of course, they'll sell you more. And they'll sell you <laughs> high quality ones and, and the PSDs for them and everything, right? So, so that's great. These are icons, um, so, that, so that's, you know, um, that's a nice thing to them. They scale well. Um, so you can just go through here. We have gone through and we've picked kind of a, you know, some of the top ones. And we tried to put them together in a way that makes sense. Instead of just saying, here are 35 different uh, components. We're kind of splitting them up into some man manageable chunks. Some ones you really should know about. So one is grouping, ways to kind of group things together on the screen. Mm -hmm. And that's something HTML doesn't really have a whole lot of. I mean, there's divs, but divs are just kind of a, a square, right? And so nope. <laughs> there isn't, you know, there aren't a lot of kind of simple ways to group things together. So we'll look at that. Another one that we kind of ambiguously titled objects is things like glyph icons and buttons, things like that. And then finally, navigation, ways to get around between things. Um, so first of all, in grouping, uh, so one thing is this jumbotron. And that's, you know, it's kind of a, a, a funny name, I think, but that's this top section <laughs> of, your, of your site, right? So that is, if, if I go in here, that's this thing here. 
It's very, very common nowadays when you go to pretty much any site, there's going to be a welcome to our site, here's why you should care. Yes. You know, big friendly letters and probably a button on there. So this is your Jumbotron. And so that, uh, that is that one. Uh, secondly, we've got uh, panels, or excuse me, uh, labels. So labels are common for, you know, you want to identify something. Uh, so if we look at labels, here's, you know, here's our example labels. So it's really just kind of a way that you can say, um, you know, this is new, right? So this is, this is a way of kind of slapping some, some information on something. This is also something you, you might want to do. So you might want to say, you know, warning, danger, you know, <laughs> things are good, things are bad, draw people's attention places. Right. right? So that's another one we'll look at. And then finally is panels. And panels a way of kind of grouping things together again. So if you want to say, you know, uh, everything in this section is related, this is how it all kind of fits together, maybe mm -hmm. put a title at the top of it. Yep. Right. So what we're going to be doing for, for demos for this is we're actually just going to, I'm going to take my site and I'm going to throw some of these in there. Perfect. We'll just talk about them. Love it. I also have another, um, I have a completed one, uh, either if I mess things up, and then also just to distribute so that you can kind of look through and they'll make a little more sense. Um, and those that shows kind of all these put together. So one uh, trick that I want to show off that I'm going to be taking advantage of during this, I'm going to be using an extension. Now, I'm going to show you some of the, uh, all of these extensions later, but one that I want to show you that I have installed is this bootstrap snippet pack. You don't have to use this at all, um, but this is, this is a, a nice Visual Studio extension. And so I've just gone out to, uh, you know, you can find bootstrap snippet pack. And this will take us to visualstudio.com. Uh, VisualStudioGallery.msdn.microsoft.com, <laughs> um, but this is a this is a tiny little you know very quick install, um, and the source code's available also, which is nice. So you can go in and see exactly how they're made, make your own. Um, so so that is nice. You can also find it in Visual Studio, in the extensions. If you just go to online and search for Bootstrap. And one thing just to be aware of, this is one place where if you're using Express, you can't install all these extensions. So that is one reason you know you may want to upgrade to a different version. You don't need to use these, but they're handy, right? So these are some that I've got installed. Bootstrap Snippet Pack is one of those. Mm -hmm. So let's go in. Now you saw I can always go in for any of these, and I can just copy and paste the HTML in. Um, but I want to instead, I'm, let me see, we're going to start with uh, grouping and we wanted to look at the Jumbotron. So you can see here's an example of it. Uh, I'll throw another one in just for fun. So uh, we'll see with two, um, two of those. So I can, once I've got that snippet thing installed, I can say insert. So let me see, insert snippet. And then I'll say bootstrap. And then I want a Jumbotron. So I'll just scroll down in here and I'll say I want a Jumbotron. So that's really all there is to it. So we've got the div, and this is a very common pattern. You'll just see, you know, the, the container is mm -hmm. going to have the class. So that's containing it. And then inside that, I've got an H1. I don't need to put anything special on that. So really, all that you did there was you just added in that little container div class. Mm -hmm. Or I, I should say, use the snippet. Yeah. It had the container div class, and it had the uh, class set to jumbotron, and that's what's giving you that that jumbotron UI. Yeah. And then inside of there, you can just put in whatever it is that you want. So if you wanted a form inside of there, yeah. or a button inside of there, or an image, or or really, you know, stream of video, whatever right. it is that you might want, you can do whatever you want inside of there. There's nothing really special about that. And that, that's a really key point. So you can nest these things, you can put them mm -hmm. together. This isn't, this isn't, uh, this is standard HTML here. Excellent. Okay. So, and, and this is taking advantage of CSS, the cascading style sheet. So what this is saying is everything inside of here, if, if there's an H1 inside of a class of Jumbotron, that's going to inherit that, uh, that styling. Okay. So, uh, so that's, that says Jumbotron heading. Uh, so now I'm going to go in and uh, refresh this here. So there's my second Jumbotron. Notice the second one didn't have a button. 
And then I'm just going to, you know, for the sake of, I'm going in a little more detail for this one just uh, as we're, you know, getting started on it. But so if I click on that, I'll see here that, okay, so this H1, you know, if, if you're good with CSS, you know, this will hopefully make some sense there. <laughs> so what this is saying is dot jumbotron, and then there's an H1 inside of a jumbotron, and because of that reason, it's font, font size 63 pixels. So okay. it weigh it up. So, so the dot, just for the, anybody who's not familiar with CSS, is for a class. class. Exactly. Okay, and a class is a type of control that gives you the ability to flag all sorts of different controls as a particular type. Yep. And a common pattern you'll see here is that they use div classes. Yep. So there are some, you know, we got some questions on here. Um, somebody was saying, why are the nav not using, you know, nav, why are they div class equals nav? Because there is an HTML nav tag. I'll talk about that more in my last session towards the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But the real idea is they, want, they don't want you to say, oh, no, I need to go in and change all my markup in order for things to work. You just slap classes in. So there's a lot of places where for reuse and for you know, making it easy to kind of move things around, generally you'll see a lot of divs with classes. All right, so there's that one. Uh, so there's my Jumbotron. Uh, another one that we want to look at is a label. Labels are really nice and, and kind of one of my first introductions to, uh, to Bootstrap. I was working on an open source project. There was uh -huh. this ambitious group of, of, of friends that put together this thing called Code 52. And they okay. wanted to do a new open source project every single week for a year. Okay. And I think it lasted a couple of months, which was still a huge effort. Right, um, absolutely. <laughs> but so we created a site and somebody said, let's use Bootstrap on this. And I was like, what is the point? And it was amazing to see how quickly things came together. Mm -hmm. So one nice thing was uh, we had, it was kind of a tracking site. And we wanted to be able to have, um, you could put in different things and it would show status for them if something was you know, accepted or rejected mm -hmm. or that kind of thing. So if I go in here and I say I would like a label, uh, then I can go in and I can say, now here's label default. And I could also say, instead of label default, I may want something like danger, or success, info, or, or, or primary. So I'm gonna say, you know, hooray. Right. So I'm going to do two of those. So I'll do one label after that. And then I'm going to do another one after it, and we'll give it some danger. So uh, and the, the, the real danger here, here is because we're repeating ourselves, and we shouldn't do that. So we'll say instead, danger, right? <laughs> OK. So now uh, let's flip over here and refresh that. Okay, so we had this, and it says hooray, and then we have the next one that says danger. Um, and I could actually put these spans. Um, the more common thing you'll see is to move that you know, inside. These labels generally you'll see hanging out at the end of content, right? So here I'm going to move this one as well. Put that in. Okay. And so then we'll hop over here and refresh. There we go. Uh, so that says hooray, and actually this one I'll change that to say danger. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so those are labels. And this is, again, this is just something very quick that you can put in to, uh, yep. to indicate how things fit together, right? Uh, one other thing I want to show here is panels. And so I'm going to put these guys here inside of a panel. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go down and uh, there's a lot of different options that you have for panels here. There's basic, all the way up through, you know, including tables, including list groups, um, so all kinds of, of stuff we could do. Um, so, and including things like footers, which is nice. So here I'm going to go in and I'm create a uh, create one. So I'm going to Control K X is another way to bring up snippets, Bootstrap, and I want a panel. Okay. So now I'm going to say, you know, a list of things. And I don't want this lorem, well, I guess a little lorem ipsum's okay, but I want to move these. Yay, lorem ipsum. <laughs> now we were looking earlier at a lot of different lorem ipsum alternatives out there. There are quite a few. <laughs> um, I think you'll be showcasing another one a little I'll bit later. I'll be showcasing one of my favorites, yep. So there I put a, uh, so here we've got a jumbotron. Inside okay. of it is a panel. Yep. And then inside of that panel, we've got some, some lists of things, and those have labels. So this is 
we're doing a few things here. One is we want to show how quick and simple it is to use these components. Right. We want you to just show add it on classes. Yep. We want to show nesting them together, moving things around like that. Right. And and show that you can you know, kind of quickly compose things, put yep. put together something pretty pretty uh, quick. So that is and and also uh, out of that too, just kind of like the general flow. Mm -hmm. If I can find something on this page, and then I can say here's how I would like it to work, and then I can just go in and start tweaking tweaking those classes and adding them on. Yep. All right. So that's that's it for a quick look at grouping. By the way, um, somebody asked a real quick question, um, just since you're currently driving, yeah. um, if you want to fire back up Visual Studio, yes. show off where the snippet menu was. Uh, OK. So there are a few ways to bring that up. One is I right click and say insert snippet. Yep. And then it's got this list. There are a lot of great snippets built in. There's things in here like HTML. I could do an audio tag or something. Yep. Um, but I can also instead do a bootstrap. Now, this is because I've installed that bootstrap template. Pack. Right. And do make sure that you go grab that. Yep. Yep. And then that's all there is to it. So, so right click, insert snippet. Another yep. is control K X. Yeah, and you have to hold down control that entire time. So control K, control X, yep. and that will bring it up. And one real nice thing is that since your fingers are already on the keyboard, when you go control K, control X, you can just type bootstrap, enter, and then go find the one that you want. Yep. And then I think it also hangs out somewhere in here, although I can never seem to find it. It's it is also in one of these menus, but but and I'm, I'm happy to just right click and insert snippet. Yep. Um, so there it is. <laughs> Yep. And a couple of people are saying that they can't find it in NuGet, um, and I just want to mention that it's not in in NuGet. That if you go to Tools and then the Extensions uh, Updates, point. you'll be able to find it under there. So just real quick, Tools, Extension Updates, and then if you click Online, yep, there we go, yeah. um, and then hit Online, and then just do a search inside of there for Bootstrap. Wow, I'm I'm demoing without even having to do anything. Yeah, I love yeah, this. I'm the Code Monkey. <laughs> This is actually, you're bringing I've always up some, wanted a code monkey. <laughs> you are bringing up some really important things. So one is these two dialogues, the NuGet dialog and the tools dialog yep. are sim similar. Mm -hmm. So NuGet is used for adding something to a project. Right. So this is if I want to add in some, some DLLs or some libraries or whatever to just this project. Exactly. If I want to extend Visual Studio, if I want to change the way Visual Studio works for everything. That's tools and then extensions and updates. Tools, extensions, and updates. Or another way I could do that is I could say extensions. I love that little search feature up at the very yep. top. Yeah. So I, I clicked in that search and I typed the word extensions. Yep. And then I hit, oops, I'll do it again. All right, and then this is also really important. Just since you bring it up, this is a very oh, yeah. common common uh, thing. People, there is an installed. If you search for Bootstrap <laughs> under installed and you haven't installed any, you're not going to find these. Right, right. right. You got to click in online. Yep. And then one other cool feature is this updates. What's nice here is it'll go through. Now I'm I'm a good developer. I'm all up to date. But over time, <laughs> you're better than I am. I'll admit it. <laughs> a little obsessive about it. But over time, they'll come out with new uh, updates for it. Maybe the snippet pack mm -hmm. they add in some new ones. Um, then you'll see those updates there. So it's a nice kind of way to update. Awesome. Those. By the way, do me a favor. Bring that screen up um, yep. uh, one last time. Oh, I, w I will. So I'm going to hit uh, extensions. Yep. Yep. Um, and then just go to online and just do a real quick search for, for Bootstrap. Um, so a lot of people are asking about, um, in particular, Calendar, or uh, they're asking about really fill in JavaScript library here mm -hmm. um, that I've seen questions about Kendo, about Knockout, about um, Angular, um, about jQuery. And there's a couple of things that are worth highlighting. Number one is the reason that I had John go back to those updates is that you'll notice that, again, we're not launching rockets here, you know, that other people have already run into this, and quite frequently people are nice enough to create a project that you could go off and uh, and download. Mm -hmm. So if you go check out those updates, you'll be able to find different plugins that are available. Now remember, those uh, extensions are for all of Visual Studio, and there's also going to be NuGet packages as well yep. that, um, uh, that could help you out. Which leads me into my next big point, which is bootstrap and fill in the blank, jQuery 
jQuery UI, um, uh, Knockout, Modernizer, um, and, and whatever other library it is that somebody else can think of that I'm just not thinking of right now, None of these are mutually exclusive, mm -hmm. that all of these are, are going to be tools in your toolbox. There's an old saying that if the only tool that you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. That's a problem because, as we all know, not everything is a nail. So you want to make sure that you do have multiple tools that are available. So if you like doing Knockout, if you like doing Angular, you can still do that with Bootstrap, that they're not mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, so, so always keep that in mind. Now, the only place where you may run into some sort of conflict is if you are using another library that depends on some of these class names. Right, right. absolutely. So, and, and I don't know offhand, I was trying to think, because I saw that question come in about jQuery UI earlier. Yeah. And I'm not aware of any conflicts, you know, but if there was, say, for instance, a jQuery UI panel, yep. and it's depending on that class name, you may run into some sort of conflict. One interesting way of solving that that we looked at earlier, we were looking at the other day, was Yelp.com. Yep. And we noticed in there the way that they, they're using Bootstrap. Yep. Um, and when uh, it's customized version there, Rob. Customized, yes. exactly. And, and so if we look at this, this, uh, this is fascinating here. Fascinating for people who think uh, HTML <laughs> class names are, are fascinating. <laughs> But here they have Y this button. a very small subset of the population. <laughs> so there they have Y button, Y primary. So they have prefixed all the bootstrap classes for right. the Y. Yep. And that's that's actually relatively easy to do using less or using you know a different build process. Exactly. And that and by doing that, then that probably deconflicts things so that they can use other libraries and they're not going to conflict in any way. So great questions. Let's before I look at this and get hungry. Uh, I am going to <laughs> skip back over here. So we have... I'm actually a little disappointed that you didn't go in and do a real quick search for spaghetti places. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right, and it's too early. Maybe lunchtime. Yes. Okay, let's go for objects. Yay, objects. So we're going to look at glyph icons, dropdowns, and buttons. And again, this is just a very quick sampling. There are tons and tons of them. Yep. We're really not trying to make you an expert on any of these specific uh, components, yep. and we're not trying to cover all the components. We're trying to give a feel for how to put them to use. Exactly, yeah. If we tried to sit here and cover every single component, we'd be here well past lunchtime, yes. and, and John would that miss out on his well. spaghetti. So glyph icons, as I was saying earlier, there was a time, I, I actually learned this from Damian Edwards, he was describing it, he's like, he's like there was that time where you found that one icon, that was that was a lot of work. That yep. was, and and so these, are, these icons are great. These are uh, Creative Commons, by attribution license. They are um, very simple to use. And so here's, here's kind of a, a quick you know, screenshot off of the site. Um, and so, uh, so those are you know, very, very convenient. Also, because these are implemented as icons, um, they are scalable. So you can take any of these and you could display them in your Jumbotron enormous size and they'll still work. Mm -hmm. Um, buttons. So buttons are, you know, we, we've seen a lot of buttons already on here so yes. far. So here's, here's an example of a button. Here's another example of a button. Now notice these are styled differently, right? So this, this one is just kind of plain and boring white. Um, this one up here is screaming for your attention. <laughs> and, and, ah! and the difference between those is uh, just based on styling. So here, that button up at the top has these styles here. It has button, button primary, button large. So just to highlight real quickly here, because I know you're going to talk about those classes momentarily, mm -hmm. that this is just a regular button. That yes. again, just a regular button, we just added on the tags. Yeah, well, even... Or added on the classes, rather. Exactly. And yep. even a little bit more, maybe terrifying for some HTML purists, these are not even technically buttons. They're A tags with that class. So, yep. and this is part of the, um, you know, this, I'll be honest, this was one thing that kind of freaked me out about mm -hmm. Bootstrap for a while, and I've kind of come to terms with it now, is they don't want you to say, okay, you need to go change your HTML. If you want to use our button classes, you need to change to a button or input right. that will submit or any of that. It's just, you can, you could take a tag, you could take a div, you know, you can just, and then it's the class that makes it light up. Exactly. So. Yep. So there's that one. So we no uh, notice again there, I said this one is button, button primary, button large. 
This one down here, if we look at some of these buttons, these are button, button default. So both of these have that button on them. So that's what makes it a button. And then it needs another class to set what the style is, what type of button. Yep. So, and, and like any of these, we can go into this, uh, this style gallery. So if I go to buttons, uh, where are we at for buttons? Button groups. Um, I think actually if I, if I um, there's my button drop downs. I think I need to go to just getting started and there's some examples there. Um, what I'm gonna do though that's more fun is just actually uh, show you some buttons and here. So here's, here's this nice slide um, that you nicely put together for me. So the example here, <laughs> again, you have the button to make something a button and then button modifier to change to select what the look is. And both of those classes are required. Yes. That you need BTN and you need BTN modifier, which if I can go back and make one more pitch for that bootstrap snippet, um, if, if, if I do have one little complaint about, about Bootstrap, and I, and I do love Bootstrap, and I want to make that very clear, because it makes it so that even I, non-graphics artist, can put together pages that, that look very good. Mm -hmm. um, if there's one little complaint that I have about it, it's the fact that a lot of times it's combo classes that, uh, that are needed, and so having those snippets there makes it that much easier because I can then just go in and say, all right, well, I want this uh, you know, particular button or whatever it is that you might want. It will automatically have all of those classes for you. So definitely take advantage of, uh, of those snippets. Yep. All right, so we're going to look at glyph icons, buttons, and drop downs. So I'm going to continue to just um, uglify this page that I've been working on. Um, and then I've got a nice kind of uh, a simpler sample at the end, so both of these I'll add. By the way, we had somebody ask earlier, you know, I, I just cloned the repository, I don't see all the code. This is, this is a work in progress, so we have, during the day we're gonna be pushing stuff up there. Yep. At the end of the sessions, we'll, we'll grab the, the code and put it up there. So let's start with glyph icons, all right? So inside of this, I would like to use a glyph icon. So I can first, uh, I'm doing Control KX, insert snippet, Bootstrap, and then I, I um, will say I would like a glyph icon. Okay. okay, so it's putting in this default info sign. And if we go over here and look at this, let's take a look in our components. And then up at the top, it's going to show my glyph icons. And all right, so here's, here's the examples. For all of these, you need two things. You need glyph icon and then the type. So very similar to that button style we talked about. Mm -hmm. One thing to say, here's the type it is, and then two to pick this specific one. So I am right now thinking that I would love to put on a calendar. Okay, would so, love to put on a calendar. Exactly. Uh, actually, I want a, a calendar, but this other one just caught my eye, which is the thumbs up. Uh, so I'm gonna do both of those. So I'm going to say calendar. So here, again, taking advantage of Visual Studio, there's that, and now I can just copy and paste, and we'll do another one, and this one is a thumbs up. Thumbs up, all right. So, um, so let's take a look over here at our page. We'll refresh that. So there is my thumbs up. I did not get my calendar, so let's see what I did wrong there. The glyph icon, glyph icon calendar. Okay, the plot is thickening. I, not sure where it is. Let's look, let's inspect element and see the one before it. So, so there's that one, glyph icon, glyph icon calendar. I am actually not seeing why it's not there. So I have another one here where I have, uh, Done well, that we, we, we knew it was going to happen. It's <laughs> there simply we go. a matter of time. We, we talked about it. Let's make sure if the, um, yeah. So I'm just going to copy those in case there's a spelling error of some weird sorts. No, that, yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. One, one other thing I want to do, just, I'm, I'm, uh, not going to obsess about this, but I am kind of having fun with this. These are relatively <laughs> simple. They're just uh, 
HTML and CSS, so I feel relatively comfortable here, and I like to tinker. Okay, I'm not seeing that calendar. It's possible that, that class name, there's something wrong with that. Um, so, but that's generally the, the way you do that. Now, let's say that that thumbs up is too small, because it is too small. And it instead, is too small. Um, so I'm going to move that up into the header. By the way, if anyone in the chat uh, noticed something, notice why that wasn't working, feel free to tell me. I'm going to cut this, and I want to move this way up. I'm going to get rid of the main Jumbotron. Oh, uh, Brian says it's white on white. Oh, that's funny. That would make sense. Um, it's interesting that this one does show. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's uh, take them up on that. Let's move that calendar up into the Jumbotron heading area. So that's going to be up above the panel. So I'm going to go here. So there's that one. And then let's, let's move that calendar. Get that up there as well. Okay. We're having fun here. So there's that. I'm, I'm still not seeing that one. Um, I, I do want to move that thumbs up into the header because that is going to be more fun. So I'm going to put that there. Okay. So we should... There. So this is a good way to welcome visitors to your site. Put that thumbs up right in the header. Thumbs up. Okay. So that's, that's what I want to show with that glyph icons. Uh, it's, they're great to use. You can use them, you know, all over the place. Not just, you know, you don't just have to drop them somewhere. You can kind of put them wherever. Also, they scale well. Um, so here I'm zooming the page way in, and that is not an image, and it's not going to, you know, um, it's not going to look bad on any screen size. That is always going to be a wonderful thumbs up for us. All right, so now let's go to buttons. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to drop over in here, and let's put a button down at the bottom of this. So if I wanted to control KX, what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to insert a button, and then I'm going to break it. Okay, so if I go in and say, actually, there's, they have a lot of different ones. Yep. Um, so I'm going to put that in and then uh, simplify it way down. So here, I've got a button default. I guess it doesn't hurt to have, yeah, we'll just do one. Okay, so there, and this says hello. All right. So there's my button. Now, that's gonna look better outside of that panel. And then here's where I can go in and start kind of messing with how I want it to look. That is a default button, and uh, I wanna get more attention for it, so I could go in and change that to another button class. So here if I say button danger, and then that's going to get it a little more attention, right? But then if I want even more attention for it, I can say button large, right? Mm -hmm. So there, that's, that's gonna make it a big dangerous button. All right, now nothing is hooked up to this. There's no, that, that link doesn't go anywhere. That's, that is just a, uh, and in fact here, another great thing, previously we saw that that button um, was an A tag. Mm -hmm. This one is a button. Either works. All that sets the style here is these classes, okay? And that is maximum zoom. Okay, so there we have that button. Now one other thing, just because we are enjoying our thumbs up. <laughs> copy that thumbs up, and I'm going to put that inside of the button. We need a spaghetti glyph icon. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Okay, so there it's dangerous, but there is a dangerous thumbs up. And let's look at the way I promised I was going to break it. So let's go in here and take out that button class. Now that, that should still work, right? I mean, because that should be enough for Bootstrap to figure that out. In fact, no, that is not going to work. Did I save it? Now you will get some styling sometimes, but it's not it's not right. There's that's like a weird button. That is a browser rendered button. And if I mouse over this, and this is a big key here. Yeah. So this says when you're using button danger, you must also specify the class button. Okay? 
So I go in there and I say btn, save it, that goes away. I got that, oops, I got that um, indication because of Web Essentials. Web Essentials, again, is a free extension. It installs on any, uh, any version of Visual Studio, including the free Express version. If, if you're a web developer, just get it. In fact, stop listening to me talking and just go to vswebessentials.com, click on download. It's free. There's also a version on here for, uh, for Visual Studio 2012. Um, so um, just a really handy thing. Just go get it. Get it. Yep. So and, and frequent updates, including here, this shows all the stuff that's been added for Visual Studio 2012. Mm -hmm. um, so you need it. OK, so there we did a button. Uh, it's a button with a thumbs up. Yep. OK. Uh, so there we've looked at. Uh, Glyph icons, buttons, and drop downs. One other, so drop downs is where we start kind of getting into things that are composed a bit. So here I'm going to do, uh, so control K X, and I'm going to do a button drop down. And so this is something where to do this kind of stuff with HTML and CSS, a lot of the things you know, that we saw so far are handy. They saved us some time, but it's something where you could mess around with for a while. This is where it starts to get to be, you know, this would take a while more to put together, okay? So this is a button drop down, and then it has all the separators, and things are highlighted, and everything looks kind of nice, all right? Um, so that is that. There are also support for a lot of other kind of advanced buttons, and I think we'll look at those in a little bit, okay? So uh, there we are. I, I was right. <laughs> so we have support for additional other kinds of buttons. Um, so we looked at, at those kind of groupings. Um, so if I go in, and I believe we have one other snippet here. Yeah, because you know, the default radio buttons are, are kind of boring. You know why they're called radio buttons, by the way? I do, actually, but go ahead. Um, for, for, for those of us that, that remember the old style car radios, you push in one button and all the other ones pop out. So the radio buttons, because you can only select one. Yep. True story. That's true. Yep. Does anyone remember? Do I remember doing that. I, 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 and, and in order to set it, you pulled it out uh, to yeah. set your favorites. Yeah, you That's pulled right. it out instead. <laughs> I forgot yeah. about that. All that we're going to do is just date ourselves. That's here. We're true. Just show our age. <laughs> I remember when I... <laughs> when I was your age. <laughs> So these... We didn't have IntelliSense. I'm done now. <laughs> we used Visual Notepad. We used Edlin, and we liked it. I actually used a Visual Punch Cart. No, I'm kidding. I <laughs> okay, so here... Uh, Visualpunchcart.net. The, ni <laughs> the nice thing here is that, you know, we can take these simple buttons, and then there's these support for button groups. And here I've got a button toolbar with a button group with buttons inside of it. So here I can start really building out kind of you know, more advanced kind of navigation, grouping things together, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so one other thing that we want to look at. So we, we looked at groupings. We looked at objects. Uh, I just showed you enhanced um, buttons. And now we're going to look at navigation. That's all in this episode. I hope this tutorial was helpful. In the next episode, we will continue with Bootstrap components. And later on, we will start with page design. Is your mind drinking with questions, queries, or doubts? Do you wish to learn more? Then visit our website, www.millionlights.org, and post your questions on our forums. We will be extremely happy to clear all your doubts. If you missed anything and want to rewatch it, you can download it from our website or can watch it online as well. You can also participate in our webinars, discussions with the subject experts, as well as get Microsoft certification on various courses through our website. You can also find us on Facebook by the name Million Lights as well as on Twitter. For more such interesting tutorials on coding, app development and building rich UIs, keep watching Microsoft Out of Code brought to you by Million Lights. Thank you.